Hey, welcome back. Same day. I'm ready to shoot this base together. I was going to pack up, but I decided I'll just go ahead and shoot it together and have you guys see it. I'm um, shooting it with um, two and uh, three and a quarter spikes. It's the biggest thing that I have for spikes, and I'll back it up with screws and then a timber lock through the whole thing through the double four inch at the end. Uh, I'll show you what we got in a second. Got all the joists crowned. Um, I cut out the best, uh, I cut the best parts of each one. And uh, I'll show you what we got. I still got to put the caps on it, but I'm going to have to measure for them. And I kind of <coughs> messed up. I got a nice two by eight sitting right there. I had another one sitting right next to it, and I ripped it down into a joy. So here's what we got. They're sitting down uh, right now. I did the layout came out just uh, right around 14 inches, double in the middle, where the forks are going to come underneath. If you didn't watch video one, watch video one. I took this uh, edge joist in that one and I transferred the layout so it's perfectly uh, the same on both of them. I did lay out both sides. I, I normally don't, but um, it's just the way that I had to work out the math on getting them even. Uh, like I said, just less than 14 inches on center. So what I'm going to do first, I'm going to get you guys back a little bit here somewhere where you're not going to get hit by the hose, is... I'm going to get this thing kind of square, so I want to get it so that the, when I do do the joist that they um, that they seat nice and flat. So right now I'm, uh, that, that side over there is going to go that way, so I'm just going to try and square it up a little bit. It's, it's not a big deal. fall off. Just gonna hang my gun for a second. That's gonna fall off. Great fucking video. You kind of have to do this when you're working by yourself. I set a two-inch board underneath um, this side. Two-inch thick board underneath this side just to hold these up. They're not perfect, but it'll just make it easier when I'm trying to line up this side. So let's get these kind of see how much. Okay, I'm close. Oh, that one's not lined up. So it's just going to make it better when I when I shoot them, just so that they seat right. And that side still needs to go that way just a little bit, or this side could come this way. Looks like I got a little bit of room to beat this side this way. That. It's a new tool belt, and I have the hardest time <coughs> finding my hammer hole on this thing. It's pretty close. You can just And, and like I was just saying, if you, if you get it kind of square, it's just they're just going to seat better. If I shove this side over this way, it looks like it's going to help a hair. That's going to get it really close. That looks close enough to do it. All right. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to shoot the side. Sorry, guys, just grabbing a... 
last sip of the drink coat you know, for to get me going here and uh what i'm going to do is we're going to shoot this whole side and then we'll go over there we'll shoot that whole side that's simple make sure you get a good view yeah and like i said i'm shooting them with three and a quarters all i'm going to do is Hold them up, line them up. I know I'm. At, you see my back. Oh, I got a multi shot here. Don't want multi shot right now. Just square it off the side. I'm going to shoot these high and low because I'm going to put a timber lock through the middle, through both um, edge joists at the end. I'm kind of square. I'll get you guys back here because you're probably looking at my back the whole time. You want to do you kind of want to do one side first. It's just gonna make it easier for you. I am gonna go over there really quick line those up and make sure they're kind of in the ballpark just going to make them seat flatter over there so i wanted to mess with it and all this is just going to do is it's just going to make it that when i hold them up over there they're nice and square So when I do shoot them, they stay. Now these are smooth coated, uh, which is all I had. I didn't have ring shanks. Normally I would shoot this with ring shanks. However, this shed is going to be about doing what you got. The double lines help you kind of line them up on these... Uh, thick joists like this because they're not exactly all say two inches so at least I can find one side of the other to use sometimes I got air flowing here I'm going to pull this one up and then I'm going to pause you guys because it looks like my uh, my power is no bueno right now. So I'm not getting any air. All right, we're back cooking with gas. Just had to throw it on a different circuit. I had too much going in the shop. Uh, we'll just keep going. We get the side done. At least we'll have a base today. We can, uh, we'll top it tomorrow. Put the uprights, get it flush.
I'm not shooting blanks. Watch the outside on this one. Come on, baby. All right, we'll go around the other side and shoot the other side. I think I will shoot all the ones that are low. That's good. All we gotta do is just pull it up a little bit. Good. It almost looks like they're all just a teeny bit low. That makes this easy. Looks like it might be a little bit of bend in this board, so I'm going to shoot this end for oh, figures. This one's low. If I shoot this one, it'll kind of help suck this in a little bit.
Perfect. Well, that was a lot of setup for nothing. This sucked in here. That's why you need screws, boys and girls. Even ring shanks won't hold that in. And what I'll do is I will go along uh, tomorrow. I'll put some four inch screws in here. I'll bang them in tight, put four inch screws in, do one whole side, then do the other whole side. And then after I put the edge joist on and the edge joist on out here, I will go ahead with a timber lock right through the middle, go all the way through, and then my little two inch uh, sill plate is going to be kind of like, I'll show you. To keep me from having to use any hangers or anything like that, which I don't. If you ever watch my uh, problem with Simpson hanger video, you should watch it. But what I will end up doing is I'll end up taking a two inch piece, and I have tons of them sitting around for offcuts, and run it underneath up tight to the joist, shoot it in, and then shoot up through the, the bottom into the joist uh, before I cap this whole thing. So I'm going to put one on that side, one on that side, a little sill plate underneath them so they can't fall down. Uh, and then I got to cap the end. So I got to cut a two by eight. That's the length from the outside of this to the outside of that. Cap the end on both sides. Shoot it into the edge joist. I have to shoot that joist together. And then these that are underneath right here. I'm going to flip up and cap the uh, that, capture that outside and cap that. And then this part will be done. Well, no, no, it won't. I have to put blocking in the middle, and uh, I will end up putting some blocking in between. Also, it seems like overkill, but like I said, when you come in with forks to move the shed and you go to pick it up, you don't want these to be able to twist. So... I will be putting blocking in between, kind of got all my off cuts sitting there to do that. Uh, and blocking down the middle. And um, yeah, we'll have something going on. So I didn't use, I used like the whole, I used all the two by sixes that were sitting over here. Um, that was sitting on the top. They were actually two by six and three quarters, something like that. I ripped all those down. I did. Uh, I only used one of the long two by sixes over there that had some messed up stuff going on, and I did end up. I ended up ripping down a two by eight, which was a mistake because I could have used it for the end cap. Uh, how long we got here? We're 19 minutes. Let's go ahead and cut this side cap, and uh, we'll put the side cap on one side. How about that? Yeah, I'll pause you guys while I get a measurement and uh, because now we're getting into boards that aren't the same thickness and stuff like that. So i got to get an exact measurement. When I come back, we'll cut it. We'll go over there. We'll slap it in. All right, so we're going to put this one on. Uh, one thing I should not have done was pre-cut this piece because if this is a lot thicker than two inches, uh, it's pretty close. Pretty close to four inches total, so it should work out. But it would have been better maybe if I didn't cut that piece. What we're gonna do is I got the board sprung like this. I'll show you guys. So you can see how there's a, a bow in the board like that. I got it sprung like that, so when I shoot the end here, I'll go down the other end and I'll I'll shoot that end pull it in, shoot that in. That'll make it tight the whole way. And then all I have to do is just make sure that it's kind of uh, flush to the top. I can use a clamp to do that. So let's just see how it goes here. I'll 
So all I want is I want it flush to the top like this, flush to this edge like that. And this is just going to be a cap. And then the outside board is going to come and shoot into this. You want to kind of keep your nails where you haven't shot. And then I want to shoot it into the joist too. And I know the joist only six. So, I'll give you guys a. Hold on, I'm going to pause you. All right, so I got a couple of clamps with me here. Danny's on his way to Doggy Social Group. She had to come and tell me. Uh, I might not need a clamp, but at least I got a couple with me. Uh, you know, this is one of those arguments against um, shooting, against cutting uh, full two-inch material, guys. And that is, it's tough to find framing nails to do two-inch material. Um, you know, three and a quarter is pretty much as much as you're going to find ever. I'm going to get this corner up. Stick my pry bar under it. See if that's yeah, that's pretty good there. Um, so you know, some people that do want to cut their framing material at inch and a half, like nominal lumber at the grocery store. Uh, there is a benefit to that. I hate hitting the wrong clamp lever. Let me get this up just a little bit. It's perfect. Perfect on the end. I'll take you around it and show it to you too. But get it shot in place. Make sure I don't get any of my other nails. Shoot the joist. One good part about doing it like this you never have to worry about shooting through with three and a quarters three and a quarters if you use inch and a half um, material the nominal Home Depot stuff you know you do have to toenail with three and a quarter so you shoot through the other side so I'm slightly low in the middle here very very slightly I could probably leave it um, let me see if I can somehow get it clamped up. I don't know if this, this clamp might work. If I can get one of the two. Yeah, it's moving perfect. It's almost perfect. Perfect. And then the other side of the equation here is, you, you know, I could go ahead and just look for a place where it's nice and tight. But you do want to keep it... When you're doing this, you do want them tight. Right now, it's beautiful. I'm just going to go ahead and shoot this right here real quick where the clamp is. And then we'll just find a couple other places to clamp it. You do it in the middles. Yeah, it did move a little bit. <laughs> Clamp is not cooperating. Go in the middle here somewhere. Or just go where the biggest gap is, like right here. Usually if you suck together the biggest gap, then you'll end up being good. Pretty tight. 
tight here. I'll do the same thing with that center beam. Uh, we'll call it the bobcat beam. So we got this one end cap on. We have to cut one to the other side tomorrow. That traps this joist. It traps this joist. Um, and then the other one's going to come over and go over the top of this one and trap this joist, tie it into this joist. And then timber locks through here into these all the way through both. A couple of screws. This one here, in theory, if you do it this way, it would keep this from being able to go out, but it could still blow out in the middle. So let's take a look at it and we'll call this one a video. And I'll take you out of the holder here. So you can see nice and flush here, nice and flush across the top, nice and flush here. This beam is all nice and nailed. It does look like there is a little bit of a bow to it. We'll be able to take some of that out if we start with our blocking in the middle and go block, block, and then make this block a teeny bit big. We'll be able to bow that back out. Not on a shed, it's not a big deal. But if I was framing a deck or a house, I would want to get this edge joist perfectly straight. Um... Hopefully you can see, I don't know if you can see or not how flush they came out. I split the layout so that these are, they're not quite 14, but they're right around 14 and, I don't know if it's 14 and 3 eighths, whatever on center. Those two are split off because you got your edge. I kind of split the gaps and made the gaps even. I wouldn't do that on a house because you need to stay on layout for your, um, four by eight stuff, but in this case, uh, I don't need to because I'm just going to deck it across this way with full length pieces, so it doesn't really matter. Um, it would matter on a house because then you'd have to do your layout on your walls to fall over the top of your joists, in theory. Um, at least I would. You, you don't have to, but I would. Your sill would in theory, take care of that, but I would always want my layout to be the same so that my I carry my load all the way from my joist all the way, anything here, all the way to the roof line. And you can see this piece right here is going to end up getting cut and going underneath right there to hold those up. And I'll put one on the other side, then I'll put this cap on this side, just like we just did on the other side, and then flip those end caps up through the end caps um and then go to work on the blocking so we're getting there we used up you know some of what we had over there some of what we had over there and we have a ton more material to use i'm a little bit undecided of whether i'm going to cut um my rafters out of those two by sixes maybe rip some other ones down to two by six or not or whether i'm going to mill a log, mill a cant out uh, for my rafters. I'm not sure yet. We'll see how it goes, but that's where we're at. And uh, for not wanting to do this today, we kind of ended up in a good spot. We got a good solid base going, and um, this is building with your lumber. So hope you guys all have a great day. And um, if you have any questions, hit me up. I'll answer you back. But for now, I gotta go put my tools away because it looks like it's getting dark out. And uh, this pipe solution is out.